Scale fingerings are an integral aspect of every instrument's technique. However, unlike most instruments due to the guitar's unique tuning, we have a variety of different fingerings we can choose from to play any given scale. Now, if you're a rock or blues player and you're content to simply play pentatonics using two or three fingerings, that's fine and dandy. But when you decide you want to play jazz or music requiring you to improvise over extensive chord changes, well, that's a whole different matter. In this video, I want to compare three fingering systems used by jazz guitarists. Finally, I am going to tell you which one I prefer and why I think it's the most complete one. Having said that, I'm sure many of you are well settled into whatever system you use and might even be biased by it, but try to keep an open mind to the pros and cons I am going to point out and you might just discover something new. I know I did. The first one and probably most popular one is the caged system. Hence its name, it is based on five basic open chord shapes, C, A, G, E, and D, which in turn are used to map out the entire fretboard. Nonetheless, in terms of accomplishing this feat, I am also going to demonstrate how it can raise some controversial questions. The C in cage is based on making the open C shape movable anywhere on the fretboard by barring with your index finger. So let's move it up here to E. Next we want to map the scale fingering that goes with this shape. And to properly do this, we have to determine what scale the chord was derived from. And in this case, and for the remaining four shapes, we will use the natural major or Ionian mode. This in turn would generate a four part major seventh shape. And there are several different shapes that we can extract from the underlying fingering, including some with upper extensions. So far so good, but next we are going to use the open A chord shape in Caged, and we are going to bar so we can move it into any position. Let's take it up here. And this is where the controversy begins. If we turn it into a uh, major seventh chord, it becomes. Correctly speaking, this shape is extracted from this underlying uh, seven note fingering. However, most players that teach cage ignore this fingering and claim a different one for the scale that generates this shape. They teach this one. Can generate this shape or this one, but not this one. Next, let's use the open G chord in Caged as a movable shape by barring with the index finger. Here it becomes C. Now, if we turn this into a major seventh chord, we can play this one, or we can play this one. And next we are going to use the open E chord in Caged as a movable shape. First, let's turn it into a major seventh. You can also play this. These shapes are all extracted from 
this fingering. Now here we have the same controversy as with the A shape. If I map out the fingering that generated these chords, the correct one is this one. These chord shapes are perfectly um, aligned with the uh, notes of the uh, scale fingering that I just played. However, the cage practitioners, at least most of them, attribute this fingering and this one generates a different chord shape. Now, there is a wholesome solution uh, to all these uh, fingering controversies, but I want to show you the three systems first so you can see and decide for yourself. So be sure to stick with me. For now, let's take a look at the final open chord shape in Caged, which is the D. Let's turn this into a major seven shape. This shape is extracted from this underlying fingering. You can also play. The three note per string fingering is very convenient for economy or speed picking as well as for sweeping arpeggios. The system also incorporates many of those uh, five fret stretches that the cage practitioners avoid. And I'm referring to what I and others consider to be the correct fingerings associated with the E and A shapes. However, if all you learn are three note per string fingerings, you're bound to end up with some gaps on the fretboard, as I am going to demonstrate. Here is a classic three note per string major scale in F. I think I might have first learned this one from the uh, Berkeley Guitar Method by William Levitt. You'll notice that I shifted positions for the last two strings. And the same thing happens with several other uh, three note per fingering scales. Here's another one. So here also we shift positions and we don't cover this area. So this may create some uh, gaps in certain regions of the fretboard that eventually you're going to have to learn separately. But let's look at the main benefit of this system. And it is based on the fact that whenever playing three notes per string and switching across strings, our picking hand doesn't have to play a stroke for every note. To use economy picking with this system, we have to always play an odd number of notes on each string. That is three notes or just one note. The formula is mathematical. When picking upward across the strings, always start with an upstroke. This means that on the initial string you will play an upstroke, then, and the final upstroke will pick the third note on the initial string, and play the first note on the next string. So, And when picking downward across uh, the strings, it's always uh, the opposite. You start with a downstroke. So basically what we end up with is when we use economy picking, we are using less strokes on our picking hand. I had 
15 pick strokes there. Now if I play it using uh, economy picking, here I only have 11 strokes. So what happens if you want to play an even number of notes on a string and use economy picking? Well, it's simple. When playing two or four notes, you do a hammer-on or a pull-off for the final note. Let me first play uh, an ascending line. Uh, here's a descending line. I'm doing a pull-off on this one. I did a hammer-on in the previous one. Economy picking initially takes a lot of practice to get fluent with. And this is because you have to organize most of your vocabulary into odd note groupings per string. However, this will not always be practical for several bebop lines. On the other hand, you have to practice getting used to rolling the pick across the strings without getting stuck. And this can be a little bit frustrating at first, especially if you've been using alternate picking for years. At least it was for me. But I honestly believe the time spent is well worth it. And we're ready for the third and final fingering system in this roundup. The heptatonic system, also referred to by some as the seventh fingering system, in addition to uh, other features, it combines the caged and the three note per string all into one system. Yep. Personally, I believe it is the best of all fingering worlds. So much so that I have written an entire book on it and I teach my students all the principles of jazz improvisation that is for guitar based on it. I want to begin by showing you how caged is already included here. So uh, let's do this in F. Those are the five shapes converted to major seven chords. However, in the heptatonic system, we have two more shapes. This system is also very useful when understood from a vertical perspective. That is, you can access seven different keys anywhere on the fretboard without moving out of position. And this helps you voice lead very smoothly over chord changes. And let me show you with uh, the major uh, seven arpeggios extracted from all these shapes. And I'm gonna play through all 12 keys and I'm going to be able to play seven of them staying right here in position. So let me start here with C. Seven different keys without moving out of position. 
the uh, five remaining ones are by moving down or up half a step. So we had played G flat, and after G flat or F sharp, we have B. keys, making a full circle back to where we started, which is C. Now, if you're wondering how the uh, three note uh, per string uh, system fits into all of this, well, it's already built into it. And this is what I like to call compound fingerings. Simply put, by playing uh, three notes per string, you can move out of position and continue doing so on an adjacent fingering. So you end up linking the two fingerings, which in turn extends their overall range. And of course, this system is great for uh, sweeping arpeggios, and usually we combine uh, one note per string and three notes per string to get the uh, economy picking going for the sweeps. That the majority of great jazz guitarists use all seven fingerings, even if they claim to just use caged. For example, take Joe Pass. He said he used caged, but in analyzing his fingerings in several videos, when playing several lines, I found that he uses at least portions of the two fingerings not included in caged. And this is the case with many others. But who cares how they think of it, or whether they call it caged plus two, uh, seven fingering, or heptatonic system, or don't have a name for it at all. The bottom line is that this system covers every possibility on the guitar, simply because it is mathematically based on the architecture and the tuning of the guitar. In other words, any form of scale or chord execution on the fretboard consisting of any amount of notes can be classified as originating either from one of the seven fingerings or a combination of them. That is what I like to call compound fingerings. And this can be applied to any seven note scale or mode as well as hexatonics and pentatonics. And these fingerings are the source that generate every chord shape possible on the guitar. Now, regarding this system, I want you to know that I've only scratched the surface in this video. So if you're interested in more information on my books and online jazz guitar courses based on the heptatonic system, I'd like to invite you to check out my website, bebopguitar.richiezellen.com, and I will place a direct link in the info section down below this video. So to conclude, I'm curious to know if this video was useful as well as your thoughts in general. As usual, in addition to your comments, I appreciate your likes. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you're just a click away. I look forward to sharing another info-packed lesson real soon with you. Until then, you know the drill. Practice, practice, practice. Go walk the dog. Come back and practice some more. <laughs> May peace be with you. <laughs>